Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So as the title says above, this is going to be a book talk video on one of my favorite biblical fiction authors. And if you guys don't know who it is, and I don't know where you guys have been because I rave about her all the time in my videos. I rave about her all the time on Instagram. And that would be Miss Tessa Afshar. She is by far one of my favorite biblical fiction authors. And there are two types of biblical fiction authors. You have the biblical fiction author who creates fictional characters and puts them into the biblical stories. And then you have the biblical fiction authors like Tessa who actually take the biblical stories and biblical people and create fictional stories around them. And I find that reading those kind of books actually help to bring scripture alive to me and more relatable. And I just love her work. I own all seven of her books published okay she's coming out with her eighth book which is called daughter of rome i'll pop the cover here you guys cannot tell me that cover is not gorgeous this is by far my favorite cover ever that she's done like ever and it is a part of her new testament series um so she has four old testament books and then she has four new testament three published one coming out which is the daughter of rome but i'm excited for that um that's going to be awesome. Then she has a Bible study coming out as well on the book of Ruth with Moody Publishers as well in 2020. So I'm super, super excited for that. I think it's called Take Me Home. Don't quote me that the title of the book will be here. Don't quote me on that. But um, yeah, I'm excited for those two releases and I'm definitely getting them because Tessa is like an auto buy for me. She's an auto buy author because all of her stuff I love. I have literally given six of her books five stars and one a four star only because i didn't really care for that book but i'm going to talk about that as we go down so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell you guys about the book read the synopsis on the back tell you guys my rating quick snippet of my thoughts and then after this video and maybe a week or two i'll start rolling out individual book review videos of each of her books because i recommend tessa to everybody so the first book is by far my favorite book it was the first book that she released in 2010 and um it literally has so much meaning for me and it's called pearl in the sand i absolutely love this book this book is the story of rahab and it includes joshua and Salmon, and it takes place around the time of jericho and um it's just amazing now i want to preface this by saying biblical fiction is fiction okay it does take scripture but it is also fiction so one thing you need to remember is that everything in this book is fictional minus the scripture portion so i would say when you're reading biblical fiction have a bible out i always like to keep my bible out as i read biblical fiction so that i can cross reference scriptures and um i actually what i do is with purple tabs let me see if i can show you guys on this page hopefully you guys can see it i actually took a purple tab i don't think this page has a purple tab it does <laughs> i have a purple tab but i actually write the scriptures where she is coming from um because i know it's fictional and this one actually had four scriptures so not four scriptures, but like one, two, four, six, seven scriptures. One here, two in this box, two in this box, and two in this box. So like I actually will mark the scriptures that they're coming from. So um, I highly suggest when you're reading biblical fiction, keep a Bible on hand, especially if you know what the book is based on. So like I know this is based on Rahab, so then therefore I would be flipping my Bible to Joshua and I'm um, keeping track with that. Now one thing I did like was that some books when you go to the copyright area like in the copyright area I think that's for I think um Misu Andrew does that in her books but she'll actually like put the scriptures that she's using which actually helps but this one I literally just type in the words um on Google and it pops up with the scripture which is awesome but just wanted to say that because a lot of people tend to read biblical fiction and tend to swear it's from the like strictly biblical base but it is biblical fiction so they're taking scriptures and bible stories and bible events and bible people and creating fictional worlds so with that in mind this is the story of rahab and what her life would have been like prior to being a prostitute during her time as a prostitute as well as her coming to the faith and after in her joining um god's family of course becoming a child of god and then giving birth to her son can't remember which one her son was because i'm not that well at remembering the lineage of jesus too well but um it's basically that now i can actually tell you she she was boaz's mother so that's the answer boaz so it basically tells that so with that in mind i gave this five stars my favorite book of her 
all time like I love this book so much it has so much meaning to me um and one thing I love about Tessa is that her book titles all have a specific meaning and she describes the meaning in the end of her books probably in like the last three or four chapters she will break down exactly the title of her books and for me this this title just it's powerful so what I'm gonna do is read the back of the book for you guys quickly but it says striking beauty comes at a price Ray had paid it when at the age of 15 she was sold into prostitution by the one man she loved and trusted her father with her keen mind and careful planning, she turned heartache into success, achieving independence while still young, and she vowed to never again trust a man, any man. God had other plans. Into the emotional turmoil of her world walked Salmon. Now, I think his name is pronounced Salmon. I'm going to put it on the screen, but I say Salmon because Salmon just sounds weird. I think a fish, but yeah. Um, But walked Salmon, a prominent leader of Judah, held in high esteem by all Israel, a man of faith, honor, and pride, an enemy. What is a woman with a wrecked past to do when she wants to be loved yet no longer believes it possible? The walls of Jericho are the are only the beginning. The real battle for Rahab will be the one of the heart. So this is a romance. Obviously, like it has to be romance. But um I just love Rahab. She's very strong. She had to deal with some craziness, like the stuff her father did to her, like I I didn't care for her father, like at all. Um her family in general just pissed me off. <laughs> but um it was a beautifully written story. I love the romance between her and Salmon. Salmon was very, very, very annoying. Like, he annoyed me. Annoyed me. To the end. But I loved him at the same time. And I just loved the way they had their issues, but they came together and meshed well. Um, and it was partly because Salmon was very judgmental. Obviously, it says that he's a prominent um, leader of Judah. And Rahab was a Zana, a prostitute. So, obviously, in his mind, she should have been stoned. But God had other plans, obviously, for her. So I just thought it was so beautifully written. I highly recommend this book. We did read this book for the ZOY book club, and a lot of you ladies enjoyed it. I highly recommend this book. It is beautifully written and awesome. The next two books I have to mention together because they're kind of like a duology. A duology, if you guys don't know, is a series but of two books. So it's duo, one, two, two books. Hope that made sense. But um, it is Harvest of Rubies and Harvest of Gold. Harvest of Rubies is book one. Harvest of Gold is book two um and the series or the duology is called harvest of rubies but i love this so much so this is based on sarah who is kind of okay i'm, I'm gonna read the back of what it says how about that we'll do that <laughs> so it says remarkably talent remarkable talent threatens to cloud a life the prophet nehemiah's cousin has been catapulted into the center of the persian court working long hours rubbing elbows with royalty and becoming the queen's favorite scribe not bad for a woman living in a man's world but a devastating past has left sarah believing that god doesn't love her and her achievements are the measure of her worth a measure she can never quite live up to darius Passer Garde, I'm gonna put his name on the screen. I normally just call him Darius Peaks. I cannot pronounce his last name. But Darius, that guy, yep, is accustomed to having his way, a wealthy and admired aristocrat. The last thing he expects is an arranged marriage to the Queen's scribe, an intelligent woman who scorns him. Can two such different people help one another overcome the idols that bind them? I am not gonna read the back of the second book only because it's the sequel and you would kind of be spoiled for this book. But basically it's kind of the what if scenario if the prophet nehemiah had a cousin who just happened to be a female who just happened to be a scribe and um she was very good at you know being a scribe but i enjoyed this this is definitely one of my more humorous reads from tessa sarah is such a comical person and it's not like she's purposely being comical she's just very sheltered um her mom had died so she was raised by her father and her father was very much work oriented so um he never really showed her any type of love or emotion unless it had to do with her performing well and doing work well so she just had this mindset that she had to work to be loved and work to um to be worth anything so it's her struggle with that and the romance between her and darius now the way her and darius met was so cute but their marriage was a hot mess only because darius didn't really know how to um kind of share his emotions in a sense and like i said sarah just did stupid things without meaning to be stupid like the one scene that cracks me up every time is her wedding scene <laughs> she basically had to prepare for her wedding she had to get her makeup done and all that but um the i think it's a chambermaid don't quote me i think it's a chambermaid maid servant don't know what they called them back then but um she had to prepare herself to prepare sarah but then she had uh something happened with her father i believe so sarah let her go so sarah had to do, do her own hair and makeup and you could only just 
imagine the tragic mess that she looked. So, ever since their wedding night, Darius has, like, disliked her because he thought she was, um, doing it on purpose. But it wasn't that. She's just very sheltered and never really cared for her appearance but um i love sarah she cracked me up so much so i highly recommend this if you're looking for more of a funnier read um the prophet nehemiah is in this this is based off of the book of nehemiah but there are other scriptures obviously intertwined i love this so much there's a lot of wisdom i think one of my favorite characters outside of sarah and darius and obviously the prophet nehemiah would have to be queen Dem demospia i think that's how you say her name queen demospia she Oh my god, that lady is funny as ever. Like, funny as ever. Um, so, you do also learn a lot about the Persian court as well. So, I do enjoy the first book and the second book. Amazing. And I think my favorite cover is the second book only because the purple and his green eyes just make me so happy. So happy. So, um, these were the next two books. Following that, we have her last Old Testament book um, that she released, which is In the Fields of Grace. And this one is obviously about Ruth and Boaz, as well as Naomi. So I'm going to read the back of it. It says, Love resurrected from lifeless dreams happens in the arms of a loving God. Without wealth or family, the widow Ruth left her people and followed Naomi, her beloved Hebrew mother-in-law, to rebuild Naomi's home in Israel. Provisions gone and starvation at the door, Ruth used all that she had left and strung a strong back and a willing heart to gather grain in a field abandoned over the har after harvest. Sorry, Tormented by others, Ruth is shocked to find the owner of the field watching her, talking to her, bringing food to her and Naomi. Boaz tells himself his kindness toward Ruth is repayment for the love she has shown to his cousin Naomi, but his heart knows better. So, again, this is the story of Ruth and Boaz, but I, what I love about this is that for this book, you kind of get a backstory for Boaz because we know that he is much older than Ruth. Um, so in this, he previously had a wife. He previously had children. But um, there were some complications with those. I'm not going to tell you guys. It's so tragic. You have to read it. It's so good. Um, this one is not tab because I did read the ebook before getting the physical copy. And then I loved it so much that I ended up getting a physical copy. Yeah, loved it. But um, I highly recommend it. The four books that I literally just mentioned to you guys. All five stars. Just letting you know. But um so so good um and if you guys don't know we did study the book of ruth and um the book of ruth for me is so powerful um it is for tiny chapters but what i've noticed about the bible is that the books with the smallest chapters really pack a punch i.e um ruth i.e jonah <laughs> so um yeah I, there's nothing much to say it's about ruth and Boaz. that's it and um yeah Moving on to the next book. <laughs> okay, so the next three books are going to be her New Testament books. And the first two I'm showing you guys also got five stars from me. But um, we'll talk about that third one when I get to it. So the one that I actually recently just finished is Land of Silence. And this one follows the woman with the issue of blood. Um, and kind of gives her like a backstory and tells you about her dealing with the 12 years of the issue of blood. Up to her meeting Jesus. And um, I loved it. It was so good. Now, a lot of people recommended this book to me. And I will say, as I thought, I cried hard when I read this. It was so sad. It was, I made so many sounds. If you guys saw my reading blog, you know. Um, I didn't cry in the reading blog, but when I first initially started reading this, it was just like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. It was real sad. Like, this one probably has the most blue tabs of all the books that I have from Tessa. Yeah, this has the most blue tabs. It was so sad. So, I'm going to read the back of it. It says, um, before Christ called her daughter, before she stowed healing by touching the hem of his garment, Eliana is a young girl crushed by guilt. After her only brother is killed while in her care, Eliana tries to earn forgiveness by working for her father's textile trade and caring for her family. When another tragedy places Eliana in sole charge of the business, her talent for design brings enormous success but never the absolution she longs for. As her world unravels, she breaks off her betrothal to the only man she will ever love, then illness strikes, isolating Eliana from everyone, stripping everything she has left. No physician can cure her, no end is in sight until she hears whispers of a man whose mere touch can heal. After so many years of suffering and disappointment, is it possible that one man could redeem the wounds of body, heart, and soul? So, we all know the story of the woman with the issue of blood. I'll put the, the scriptures on the screen of where it's from. But she was never named. So in this, um, Tessa gives her a name, which would be Eliana. And they do talk about her name, Eliana, which means um, my God has favored me, which is so amazing. If you haven't seen my reading blog, check that out for more info. But, um... This was heartbreaking. I just... Uh, it was heartbreaking, you guys. I loved it so much. I gave it five stars. Now, a lot of people ask me if um, this would have topped Pearl in the Sand. No. If I would have read this before Pearl in the Sand, it could have. 
but Pearl in the Sand will always have a place in my heart just because I resonate with it. However, this book ripped out my soul, it ripped out my heart, it made me cry just because the stuff she had to go through and just seeing her go through so much pain and suffering and then get hit with the issue of blood for 12 years and I mean it goes from year to year to year so you're experiencing experiencing the 12 years with her and there's this one character that I couldn't stand I hated him to the end because he pissed me off because he was evil and twisted and he was a jerk okay his name was Decimus I think it was Decimus Calvis or something like that I could not stand him now Ethan which her, which was her betrothed I loved him Ethan and Barato, Barato, I don't know how to pronounce it. It'd be on the screen. Them two, I, I love them. And then this also includes um, Lydia, which I'll show, talk about her in the next book, as well as Titus and Claudia. So I love that. And just how Tessa um, portrayed Jesus in this, I loved it so much. So Land of, Land of Silence definitely had gotten a five star for me. It was phenomenal. Um, all my reviews for each of these books will be linked down below if you guys want to see the written reviews because I'm not that great at like these talking reviews. So my written reviews are more in depth. So if you want to see that, just click down below. But Land of Silence was awesome to me. The next book, which I kind of sort of just mentioned um, in the last book, but that is Bread of Angels. And this one follows Lydia, who is the seller of the color purple. Um, we all know her story with her and Paul. And this is, I think, the second book I've ever read that includes Lydia. But um, I'm going to read the back of it. It says, Purple, the foundation of an influential trade in Roman world dominated by men. One woman rises up to take the reins of success in an incredible journey of courage, grit, and friendship. And along the way, she changes the world. But before she becomes Lydia, the seller of purple, she is a simple merchant's daughter who loves three things. Her father, her ancestral home, and making die. Then unbearable betrayal robs her of nearly everything. With only her father's secret formula left, Lydia flees to Philippi and struggles to establish a business on her own. Determination and serendipitous acquaintances, along with her father's precious dye formula, help her become one of the city's prominent... <coughs> Sorry preeminent merchants but fear lingers in every shadow until lydia meets the apostle paul and hears his message of hope becoming the first christian in all of europe but still lydia can't outrun her secrets forever and when past and present collide she must either stand firm and trust in her fledgling faith or succumb to the fear that has ruled her life so pretty much the story um is surrounded around lydia and i actually enjoyed this and i loved paul in this book so much apostle paul was phenomenal in this book now Tessa did write another book which I'll talk about with Paul and I didn't care for him that much in that book I really loved him in this book but um Lydia is very sassy I love her she's hardworking she's amazing and it's just beautifully written five stars the last book from Tessa is the only one to have gotten a four star for me and I will be rereading this book now I read this book twice already read it twice so yeah um I will be reading this again with a different mindset to see if it'll get a five star for me the second time the third time around excuse me but um that would be thief of corinth and um this one just follows paul the apostle in corinthian in corinth so it's about first and second corinthians chapters is what i believe don't quote me on that but um yeah i'm just looking at the scripture references like there's a lot of scripture there's not many scripture references but um it takes place with paul and corinth and um the back of it says first century corinth is a city teeming teeming with commerce and charm it is also filled with danger and corruption the perfect setting for ardenay's greatest adventure after years spent living with her mother and oppressive grandfather in athens ardenay runs away to her father's home in corinth only to discover the perilous secret that destroyed his marriage though a greek of high birth galenos galenos i don't galenos his name is on the screen, <laughs> is the infamous thief who has been robbing the cities corrupt for their ill-gotten gains. Desperate to keep him safe, Ardenay risks her good name, her freedom, and the love of a man she adores to become her father's apprentice. As her unusual athletic ability leads her into dangerous exploits, Ardenay discovers that she secretly revels in playing with fire. But when the wrong person discovers their secret, Ardenay and her father find their future and very lives hanging in the balance. When they befriend a Jewish rabbi named Paul, they realize that his radical message challenges everything they fought to build, yet offers something neither dared hope for. So, you can tell by the way I read the back of this book that it's not one that I care for. Um, don't get me wrong, it's really good. But it didn't really do much for me, which is why I got a four star. 
Um, I did love everything Paul said in this um, book. It was amazing. Like, I have a few green tabs, but not a lot of tabs, you can tell. Um, the things Paul said were was amazing. There is, um, I think, a printable that I, I printed out. Yeah, I did a printable um, on some things that Paul had said, and I'll leave the link to the printable down below. And it's just a free download. You can download and print, and it was really, really amazing. Like, amazing knowledge that he spit. But, um... Yeah, I, there's not much to say. I mean, I like Ardenay. She's very um, feisty, very sassy, very bold. Um, her father was kind of like first century corn Robin Hood in a sense. But um, yeah, there's not much to say about this book, honestly. My review, both my reviews will be down below. But I don't have much to say about this book. And I really just want to love it because a lot of people do love this book. But I can't. It was a lot of comical moments. And the romance was a little bit iffy as well, too, for me. Like, there's a twist concerning the romance that, like, blew my mind. It was still good, don't get me wrong, but it was just like, whoa. But, um, yeah. So, those are the seven books from Tessa, and I have read them all. Let me show you these beauties, if I can, side by side. Can we do it? I don't know. <gasps> Here they are, in their glory. And, um, like I said, Pearl in the Sand, by far, is my favorite, um, Favorite Old Testament story from her. And Land of Silence would probably be my New Testament. Mm, be, no, I'll say Land of Silence was probably my favorite New Testament story from her. But um, Tessa Abshaw is just phenomenal with her writing. I highly suggest her to you guys. Um, I, I would not steer you wrong when it comes to talking about books. Especially biblical fiction. Just because I'm a book nerd. You know, I like books. And I like books that actually will teach me something. And when it comes to Tessa's books, I mean... All but one, well, all but two, tabbed up well. I will be rereading um, In the Fields of Grace so that I can tab it up because I did read it on my phone through ebook. But um, her books, they really, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? They really strike you in your heart. Um, and it really helps to bring scriptures alive and make the people from the Bible a lot more relatable. For me, Rahab became so much more relatable in reading her story. Um, the prophet Nehemiah didn't seem as intimidating. Because, I mean, when it comes to reading Old Testament, especially the prophets, minor and the major, I'm a little intimidated because, you know, they, they speak in prophecy. But it became so much more relatable after reading Harvest of Rubies and Harvest of Gold. Um, what else can I say? Yeah, Lydia came... Lydia and um, the one with the issue of blood became more real for me because you don't hear much about them in the Bible. So reading these biblical fiction books about the biblical characters, biblical characters, I don't like saying characters, biblical people, and um, the events brings it to life for me, which I think is a lot more helpful. A lot of people tend to find the Bible intimidating. And my suggestion is definitely read the Bible. You, obviously, you should read the Word of God. But I feel like biblical fiction can also help you relate better to the scripture because i'm not gonna lie the bible can be hard to read especially if you're new to opening up your bible for the first time i don't know if i have a video yet but i will be doing a video on like if you're new to reading your bible where to start and things like that supplies you should use because i get a lot of questions about that too but um if you are like deathly and that sounds crazy to even say that but if you're afraid of reading the bible i would say get your bible get a biblical fiction book and get one that is based off of a specific person in the Bible that you could relate to and it would help you want to read about it. Because for me, I know this is completely not even talking about Tessa, but for Connie Lynn Cassette, reading her Cities of Refuge series sparked my interest into wanting to know more about the Cities of Refuge. So then I ended up... Um, studying the book of Joshua and learning about it then I went back to numbers and then I went to Deuteronomy like I was studying it so I will say for me biblical fiction helps me want to study deeper it really connects the characters I keep saying characters oh my god the people to me and um makes it a lot more relatable brings it to life and I just definitely enjoy it so much but um yeah Tessa Abshaw for me is by far my favorite author I cannot wait for Daughter of Rome I believe that comes out February 3rd 2020 if I'm wrong, the correct date will be on the screen, but I'm excited for that release. I'm hoping to be able to get on her launch team because I just would love a physical copy of that book before it comes out. Just saying. Um, and because the cover is gorgeous, I will have a book look makeup coming. Book look makeup tutorial coming. Yes, because that series is coming. It's coming at the end of September. You will have two. I'm working on them now. I mean, by the time you're watching this, 
they'll be in the process of either editing or me recording them. But I told you guys about the series that I'm working on, and I definitely have to include Daughter of Rome because those colors on that cover are stunning. So, that is it for this video. If you guys have any other questions about um, Tessa Abshar, any of the, like, if you want in-depth reviews on where those are coming, um, if you have questions in general about biblical fiction, just let me know. I'm definitely going to be doing more biblical fiction videos. If you guys are interested, you can go check out Jennifer Van Maurick's channel. She talks a lot about biblical fiction phenomenal young lady i love her channel two pieces um i'll leave a card linked above so you guys can check that out but i think that's it for this video i don't want to keep rambling so oh if you guys are interested this shirt is one of the daughter of increase shirts and you can get it the link is down below you can just go to my blog to the shop to order it but um yeah it's just rose gold square with the lavender underneath that says daughter of increase and this is of course the colors and a lot of people don't realize the colors of daughter of increase but it is lavender rose gold black white and pink those are the colors i just i don't know i gravitated towards those colors and i think rose gold is a pretty color and then lavender i'm gonna do a whole video on like colors and what they symbolize as well as numbers because as a liturgical dancer colors have a lot of meaning um biblically speaking so i'm gonna do a video on that but I think that's it. I said that like twice already. So we're going to end this video. Thumbs up this video. Comment down below. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed. And if you are subscribed, click that little bell to stay notified. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.